Hi, Stefano Falsche here. Today we're gonna focus on a track I wrote for the newly released Intime Legato Cello. It's the same track you can hear in the trailer, but this is the full version. We're gonna talk about string writing, orchestration tips, how to write a compelling and effective melody, and so much more. So let's first listen to the full track. So the first thing I did when I received the library was to play with it for hours because it's so inspiring, just a pleasure to hear that sound and, you know, under your fingers. And uh, at the end of the day, I came up with something and that was the core idea of the piece is what you hear in the first three seconds. <laughs> It's really idiomatic writing for cello and for strings in general. The notes seem quite distant. Is uh, we are in G minor and it's there are a fifth apart, so it's like G, D, and B flat. But because of the cello, as you know, four strings, it's actually really easy to move from one to the other. So don't be afraid. You know, even there's a big gap, it's probably doable. Then I added afterwards this little snippet uh, that goes like this that, da, da, da. and that also is something I would like to expand on so in your pieces if you have um, an even smallest cell of the melody then I will encourage you know use that again I think it's always good to give anchors to listeners we need to create a structure for the theme that repeat so otherwise if we keep changing where we're going i think who listens will be like lost like i don't know where i'm going but if you have something that has some variation but as a similar structure and could be like the similar gap or like a similar rhythm that would be helpful so the small melodic part da 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 i use it later in various ways um like here moving on in the second part of the theme <laughs> and so on. I usually write melody and harmony at the same time, but this time, maybe because I was inspired by the sound, I just wrote the melody first. And I mean, that's not right or wrong. I think both have, you know, benefits. I had a certain idea where I was going harmonically, but it's always nice, and this is like a, a pro of writing the harmony later, it's nice when you maybe try different chords, like, oh, okay, this is interesting. I wouldn't have thought about that. But I think in general, it's, I will suggest writing them at the same time. 
talking about a theme, it can be divided in two parts, this like sort of exposition, and then the second part, it's something that leads us back to the theme, which is also another point you can apply in your melodies. I think before we go back to reiter reiterate a theme, we need that drive, we need the tension that then resolves on the theme. That's why the second part, it's there. And this is like on the ends on the dominant, so in D major. And really it's like, oh, I need to go back to that theme. Then talking about the accompaniment, and I usually use the piano to figure out the harmony or strings. So I think, you know, you can't escape from that. The piano, you know, is as bare as it can be. And I have two parts, one very fast and like a projected part, and one is more like uh, sustained chords. And then together with the cello. And I think this really makes the harmony very clear. Then we have these arpeggios, which are, when I play them at first, not pianist, like virtuoso pianist, but you know, no way we're around it, but with a MIDI keyboard, it's really challenging to play these sort of things in time. And it was sort of working as a, really a texture, as an effect, this like faster arpeggio. But then I actually then kept the notes, but tightened it up and sort of quantized them. And then I applied something inside Logic. In go, if you go to MIDI Transform, you can go to Humanize and that slightly, you know, give a bit of a change so the notes are not super precise, change a bit the, um, the velocity. So it gives a touch of, you know, human feeling to it. And uh, this is how it sounds by itself. This is another thing I want to mention. Like, if you have a melody, it needs to be... Wait, these are not, like, rules. Like, you know, every rule can be broken. But I think a tip, if you have a melody, then I think the to make it stand out, the accompaniment should be different, in different range, maybe a different articulation, a uh, different instrument. So we have a, a sort of slow melody with a cello, and then we have this fast arpeggio in the background, um, which is doubled, by the way, by the harp. Um, so I think together we have a sort of an anchor, or at least something that is harmonically clear with the piano chords. Then you have this textural effect with the piano and harp, and then on top of that, the cello playing and introducing the melody, which leads me to another point, which is when you first introduce a melody, it's good if it's very clear, because if too much going on already, then we can't remember it too well the second time. So maybe, you know, the second time you can add lots of things, but that's why, uh, you know, in film scores often um, you have maybe the, you can introduce the melody before the main statement, you know, the big statement with the horns or whatever it is. If you play it first, it will be more effective the second time because then the audience by then will know it and it won't be like processing. It will be just appreciating it. And this is like the similar a similar concert applied here, so just cello and piano. So moving on to the second part, we have the cello in the higher register. I transpose it up an octave because I didn't want to repeat in the same part. And also, again, this is a demo and I wanted to showcase the cello in other ranges. <laughs> And it's so beautiful. Then here you can see that it's slightly different. I mean, it's good because, you know, I wanted to have a variation, but also it, 
it would have been too high for the cello. So when you do this, like, you know, transpose or change, it's also good to think, okay, where's the limit of the cello? So you have to come up with something that sounds natural. So for the second part, I thought, okay, let's bring in some more instruments. And as you can see, we have uh, the bass, violin legato, and clarinet doubling the cello, a strings tremolo, and then later on flute and oboe as well. So the reason behind this is like, I add something more in, in, the, in the accompaniment, then we need to add something more also in the melody. Otherwise, it will be unbalanced. The accompaniment was the piano. Now we got strings and the bass. Okay, let's add to support the cello, then violin and clarinet. And this is how it sounds, violin, clarinet and cello. <laughs> Then we have tremolo strings with the bass. The flutes come in and play an octave above, you know, what couldn't be played by the cello is played now by the flute. So this is how it sounds all together. Is, again, it's quite subtle, you know, the, the violin and clarinet, they're not as prominent, but that's what I wanted to go for. Because the, the main focus is the cello anyway, so it's, it's just like a slight support. Uh, also, the, the cello is fairly sharp in the higher register, very emotional, and I think adding the clarinet and the, the violin smooths things out. Moving on, we have uh, also a tam tam that leads to another section. Again, adding uh, maybe cymbal rolls, tam tam, or like, timpani rolls, it's a good way to, you know, give announce. Okay, we are going somewhere else now. Something is about to happen. Then we are in the third part of the piece. The one I called uh, it's like a small development. I was inspired, I wrote this melody with a cello. Because <laughs> I was loving it, honestly. I It sounds surreal. I had also horns here that play a counter melody um, later. And we stop the piano arpeggio because we already repeated the theme two times. Okay, that was enough. Uh, let's go somewhere else, somewhere new. The cello is doubled by the clarinet and oboe and this is how it sounds like. <laughs> subtle but it adds another color to it and um, it's probably not a realistic orchestration probably you know in a real concert hall and orchestra you know that they would be louder but that doesn't matter because um, this is like you know visual piece and let's do what we want there are, as Hans Zimmer said you know if there's a rule break it so let's listening to the horns I think adding a counter melody will enhance your melody somehow This, these four notes, actually, you know, if you want to write a counter melody, you need to have some uh, room for it. It sort of fills the gap when the melody doesn't play, and it needs to be a nice sort of melody, compelling as well. It doesn't need to be something random. <laughs> Then we have a small uh, rallentando for the final part. 
And for this part, I wanted to showcase the cello in a very bare setting, like with just basically just tremolo strings, other string textures and brass, and that's it basically. It's like a drone, really. It's orchestral, but it's used as a drone. Um, for this part, I also modulated, which is another point I forgot to mention. If you want to show development or something, you know, you're going on a journey, modulate, don't stay in the same key for, you know, for all the pieces. This is not like, you know, production music where they want you to be, you know, just one piece. Go somewhere. Take, a, take me on a journey. And modulation is a great way to do it. So for this part, again, we are back in the low register and uh, I don't know, I had this image of when there's like a drone uh, and, oh, you know, a solo instrument, cello with lots of reverb. I, I keep thinking about Ireland or like, you know, times like Jane Eyre or these kind of things. Very solitary, you know, natural, cloudy landscapes for some reason. <laughs> And one thing I like to point out is like, I haven't touched the mod wheel. As you can see, I haven't touched it. It just sounds phenomenal like that without touching anything. That's how good it is, how emotional, how alive it is. I, I usually use mod wheel, but not in this case. I hope this was helpful and there are some ideas in there that I share today that you can also apply to your pieces. We also have a walkthrough where I go in detail about all the features that the cello has and lots of demos on our website. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Uh, my thoughts on the cello is that it's just beautiful, you know, really beautiful tone, super realistic legato, perfect for writing these slow emotional lines and just a pleasure and a joy to use. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.